Spencer Rattler and Austin Stogner, the uh, the all Big 12 tight end from 2020, they are transferring to South Carolina. So Shane Beamer's connections back in Norman come through in this one. Of course, they have been pretty hot on the recruiting trail. They have been landing some four stars here recently. Uh, look for a big signing day from them. Of course, this is the Wednesday show. We, we record it late on Tuesday. So we won't be discussing all of the the recruiting day stuff, right? The signing day events as they go on. But uh, but look for big things from South Carolina. This is a pretty big deal. I think Spencer Radler going to South Carolina is a good sign for the future. Like, this is only a one-year stop-off. And while we have not liked what Spencer Radler was doing at Oklahoma, I don't know that that necessarily means that he's a bad quarterback or any of those situations. Where, where it was a downgrade at Oklahoma – it can certainly be an upgrade at South Carolina. I, I yes. like the move. I like the move. No, I think so, this is good. Yeah, South Carolina, like the majority of their snaps were taken by like a 27-year-old grad assistant, all right? Yeah. Like that nobody else wanted, and he was going there to be a coach. Like he was not going there to play football. He just happened to have a year of eligibility left. That's where they were scraping to find quarterback play. My thoughts on Spencer Rattler, I was trying to find the text. I sent with my uh, buddy who is the big, big boy Gamecock fan. He goes to two or three football games a year. Uh, his family is from that area, and they love them dearly. For those he that do been, not know, we are based in Memphis, any yeah, first-time listeners. Yeah. So traveling from Memphis, Tennessee to Columbia, South Carolina oh, several times a year no is joke. a big deal. So yeah, that's that's like thirteen hours, twelve hours, something oh, yeah. like that. It's a hike. It's a hike. So anyway, and there's no way like you're not flying there. Okay. No. There's there's no there's no big airport in Columbia, South Carolina. So anyway, they I asked him because I know he hates Oklahoma and he really didn't like Spencer Radler. And he said, I, I'm gonna try to quote him because I can't find the text, but it's basically, look, I think he's a punk ass punk, but he's a hell of a lot better than anybody else we got. So he's good to be my quarterback. I would. No, I'm not trying to invite him over to to dinner. So, there you go. He, you know, that makes sense. He, he's a, he's kind of a piece of crap, but he's my guy now. So let's let's hope that he stops doing with the piece of crap things. And obviously, his teammates can't all hate him if his tight end decided to come with him. Agreed. And and that might not have th- those two things might not be related at all. He could have had a great relationship with Shane Beamer. I think Shane Beamer worked with the tight ends. He did. So. So that, so yeah, I was about to say, so that might not have anything to do with why the tight end decided to come. But anyway, neither here nor there. I, I do hope that Spencer grows up and matures a little bit because I, I like the Gamecocks. And uh, I'll tell you this, in the war of the East in the SEC, outside of Georgia right now today, I, I don't know that Shane's not cooking along. I, I, I kind of think that the power dynamics are changing. Oh, very much so. Very much so. Outside of outside of maybe Hendon Hooker, eh, who else am I missing? I like, like that Tennessee might be, and I like South Carolina. And two years ago, if you said those are the two and three in the SEC East, you kind of would have been laughed at. I and, think so. You know, and I know that I'm just poo poo and you know what Mr. Stoops has done all of these years building Kentucky, but I, I like the other two right now. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I do think Kentucky. I mean, it they'll be good for as long as he's there, right? That's but right, there's that's nothing right. flashy. They will be stable. Like he is a grown up. He's probably the best coach in the East because yeah. he is a grown up. Kentucky is beyond the uh, the hype stage, and that's yeah. what South Carolina and Tennessee are in the middle of right now. In the middle, Kentucky uh, is just you're exactly right. Yeah, uh, a win over Kentucky this year for Tennessee uh, was a really, really big deal. We'll say that, big, but but for South big, Carolina, big. yeah, I mean, I think good things are on the horizon. This is what you brought Shane Beamer in for to establish a good culture to continue to build talent on talent. He can do it. I think he can do so, it. So, I got, I got, a, I got a thought on that. His name came up for a couple of head coaching jobs this year after one year at South Carolina. I really hope he doesn't do one of these real short stints and moves on to some well, other place. His his name was brought up for Virginia Tech. Of course, his yeah. dad was the longtime legendary coach there, and yeah. it was brought up for Oklahoma. And that's yeah. because he had so he was special teams coordinator there, uh, along yeah. with tight ends coach. 
The special teams coordinator knows everybody on the team. So if he continues to do well at South Carolina, his name's going to come up for a lot of jobs. I would like to see, I know that I'm not asking him to be there for a decade. Okay. That's not what college coaches do. I I would like to see him have an entire recruiting class. I'd like to see him be there from the guys he recruited last year to be seniors and graduate. And let's see what you can build in an entire recruiting class life. So, so at least four years. Four, yes. I would like to see yeah. what he can do in four years. I think we could see that. I think we could certainly see. I that. don't. I don't know. I think if he's hot, I think. I think bigger jobs are going to come a calling. How many other big jobs see, are there that have not made changes recently? Right. <laughs> like, and you think that changes anything? You think it changes anything? I mean, within he's already been there one year, so we're looking at three more seasons. You I don't. Mean, you don't think so? You don't think there's a big boy job that's going to open every season? No, I mean at Nebraska next that's year, insane. but is that is that that's big boy? Insane. Like I don't that, think we're going to see. But you're you're trying to predict the tea leaves, Gary. Nobody thought Oregon was going to open this year. Nobody thought Miami would open this year. These are these are jobs that nobody had anyone on the hot seat for. Okay, True. like you can't predict what's going to happen in this damn sport. I know you're if right. You th- you're right. That, so that's just a full man's game. Yeah, I mean at Florida State, that could be an interesting one that uh, that we need to pay attention to next year. Uh, I wouldn't imagine, but, I mean, if things go poorly, if he doesn't make a bowl game again, uh, Mike Norvell down there, I mean, you never know. You never know. We so just Shane see Beamer, coaches get fired really quick. Uh, well, yeah. So, let, let me ask you this. Quinn Ewers comes to Texas. Not saying he's going to – Shane Beamer's going to – but big boy jobs are going to open. How long – let's say Sark has another losing season. No bowl game, five wins. You don't think they fire him after two years? Yeah, no, Absolutely. Absolutely. He wins 10 games in two years. His ass isn't getting fired. His ass is getting strung up in the street. Yeah. No, you're right. You're right. All right. So Shane Beamer, one to pay attention to. I mean, the fact that he got South Carolina to a bowl game this year was Don't pay attention almost to miraculous. It. I let him stay there. I love this team. I really like Tennessee. I really like South Carolina. I don't want those coaches to get poached. I want them <laughs> to stay and build something. Don't You have to spend your life there, but build something. Let's there see you, you build something. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.